welcome. Uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit about Viva Topics today, and this is the third in our series about Viva Topics for our Spring 2023 series. So please do check out the other two sessions if you haven't already. My name is Naomi Moneypenny. Awesome to meet you. If I haven't met you before, I happen to have the privilege of leading product development for parts of Microsoft Viva. And today in this particular session, we're going to talk about creating your knowledge sharing culture, something that's really an imperative for organizations going forward, especially in this era of doing more with less. We really want to think about how we can use that cumulative knowledge, the collective brain, if you will, of your company and be able to bring it to bear for all of the organization. And so for us, there's a couple of different things that come out of this. So one is like, how do we help you to actually consume knowledge in a new and different way, making sure that it's being delivered to you in the flow of work. And there's some certain habits and behaviors that we want to do there. And then there are also ways that we help you want to contribute your knowledge. Of course, AI can't do everything. So this combination of people and AI coming together is really important. And so making sure that we're able to contribute and value those contributions from everybody in the company. So really thinking about it broadly in your organization. So I'm going to hand it over to Eric, and he's going to tell us a lot about how to build a knowledge sharing culture. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Naomi. Let's do a deep dive on some of the personas that are important to, to building a, a healthy knowledge network. So we know that the AI is already assembling documents and resources um, and organizing those by, by topics, but there are people that are working behind the scenes to ensure that the knowledge that gets exposed to, to users is of high quality and, and useful. Uh, the first two personas that we're gonna talk about are the, the knowledge consumer and contributor roles. These are a, a little more self-explanatory than some of the other roles that we'll, we'll deep dive on. But to kickstart this flywheel, uh, we want to ensure that knowledge contributors have a way to uh, provide lightweight feedback on the quality of topics and, and also edit those topics. Uh, and knowledge consumers need, need ways to be able to, to find and reuse that, that knowledge. Um, so the idea is that uh, the, the contribution and sourcing of information on a topic is, is grassroots in nature. Although there are uh, people that sit on top of these, these knowledge contributor roles that guide the overall quality of the knowledge network. And so those are some of the personas that we're going to talk about today. So the first persona that we're going to talk about is the admin. The knowledge manager admin has it is responsible for the setup and initial administration of the knowledge network. So they can make choices like, do the AI suggested topics get exposed to end users, or do we want to more tightly control the experience such that those you know, potentially low quality topics don't get exposed to users? They also can decide who gets that knowledge contributor role, who can edit topics. Is it everyone in my organization, or is it, or is it only a, a subset of people within the organization? And then the knowledge manager is um, essentially the, the next persona in, in the customer adoption journey. And their responsibility is to look at the entire landscape of topics and decide you know, what are high quality topics that need to be um, elevated to the organization, in which case you know, they, they should confirm those AI suggested topics and what topics are not valid entities or have low quality information and, and should be pruned to ensure the, the quality of the, the knowledge network. And so customers have had a lot of success in having their knowledge managers um, kickstart this flywheel of knowledge contribution and sharing uh, by having users participate in things like curatathons, um, you know, Yammer community posts help to, to get people to, to encourage people to, to do the initial sharing and, and kickstart that, that knowledge sharing flywheel. Um, and let's, Let's double click on the knowledge manager role persona in, in more detail. So we talked about the knowledge administrator. Uh, the knowledge manager is really ultimately responsible for the, the quality of, of the knowledge network and performing triage tasks, such as reviewing AI suggested topics and, and removing the ones that are not useful. Um, so they can do this through a special view that's only available to to that role, which is called the Managed Topics View. This is part of the larger Topics Center. Here they can see a comprehensive list of topics within the tenant. They can see what topics are being suggested by the AI, and they can search. They have advanced search and filtering capabilities 
to be able to zero in on particular topics as needed. So this, this shows that customer adoption journey that we talked about. Admins first start with the setup and, um, and setting the initial rules for how topic discovery happens and who can edit topics. Then the adoption process gets handed off to the knowledge manager who's evaluating the results that are produced by the AI and um, also encouraging contribution of not knowledge contributors. So here's a view of that knowledge manager view. Like I said, this is called the managed topics view within Topic Center. And there are, there are a few different metadata fields that knowledge managers can use to decide how to attack this list of topics. So for example, they can sort by impressions, which is a count of how often a topic is being exposed to end users. This helps knowledge managers focus on the topics that are, are getting highly trafficked by end users um, to ensure that you know, their, their efforts um, are, are being felt by, by, by end users. There's also a concept of a quality score. This is a measure of how confident the system is that a topic is indeed a valid entity within the organization, as well as how complete the metadata is associated with a topic. And so it's useful for a knowledge manager to sort this list by topic score and work from top to bottom, such that they are, are focused on promoting uh, topics that have a high, high quality score, um, such that they get seen by, by more users. So in this way, a knowledge manager can influence what, what types of topics get elevated to the end user, promote the good topics and, and prune prune the bad topics or augment the bad topics with additional information uh, such that they can raise that, that quality score. We also have an, an initial set of analytics that CAMS can use to see how many topics are getting suggested by the AI, how, how many topics are getting confirmed via end user actions, and how many topics ultimately get published and are um, complete and ready for consumption by uh, the larger group of knowledge consumers. More analytics to come, but that is what's shipped thus far. Excited for, for people to be able to try out the, the knowledge manager specific experiences. Okay, people. People are the magic sauce in the value curve of Viva Topics and reducing the time to value. So let's have a look at what people can do within an organization to contribute to topics. First up, something not a lot of orgs currently do is customizing topic pages for certain types of topics. And although we don't have standard templates for topic types yet, editors can go into any topic page and customize them to their organization standards by adding things like custom web parts and valuable information that is specific to the topic. So you can see that here. Moving on, we also have a varied set of experiences on Viva Connections and on the topic card that allows users to re review and confirm their connections to topics in one click. So this is so valuable, gets users to confirm right then and there um, and start to build up the quality of those topics. We also have a varied set of experiences um, in the Topic Center as well. The Topic Center acts as your single shop destination to view all your topic associations and then review and change things on your topics as things change in your organization. So helps to keep things up to date, helps to keep people on top of those topics. Okay, and then here we're showing two things. On the right, you can see user feedback. So we have varied sets of targeted questions from simple things to one-click experiences on topic cards. And this user feedback is super critical in improving the overall quality of the topic. Um, in our algorithms. So that user feedback is really critical in getting people involved. And then also, finally, on the left here, we're showing end users can also create topics that should exist in the system, from clients like Yammer um, or Viva Engage, as it's now called, to create a knowledge base that is customized and valuable for your organization. So these are things to get people in the loop, to get people involved and connected with topics. So that is a little bit about the personas that underlie successful knowledge sharing culture. Uh, we look forward to, to people exploring the, the knowledge manager specific uh, features and kickstarting the, the flywheel of knowledge contribution and sharing.